Hi everybody, it's Kathy from Huckleberry Herbs and Art, and this is part three of the Italiana Riviera mini album. And uh, most of the items that you're going to see you can get at my store, huckleberryherbs.com. Please stop over and visit. I also have, besides heartfelt items, Ranger, Delusions, Tim Holtz, and uh, Lice Laces, and things like that. So please check it out. Um, I really wanted to use this paper. I was dying to get into that uh, more of the purple tones and I really think this is a nice bright cheery paper but I'm doing this in a frugal way compared to the first album, the Raindrops on Roses album uh, where I used more than one pad. Let's put it that way, that was my favorite so I, I went to town on that. Uh, this one I'm doing a little bit more frugally and so I've been trying to use some cardstock and so far we've done some of the cover and the first page and I'll leave the links to those pages in the cover which is not completed but right now I'm gonna work on the next pages with this paper as the main focus so in an attempt to use only one sheet I started off with more of that olive cardstock and I have already inked up the sides and I have decided that I wanted to put um, my papers in a way that would leave some of the black. I mean I'm working in the black album I want to see some of the black peeking out so I have cut the paper so that it does show a black border so you can do it by just making your cardstock a quarter of an inch smaller than the actual size of the pages and I'm just going to place this down trying to get myself pretty much an even amount of the black showing all the way around and that will give me a base on the left side and I'm using the same paper which I even left eight and a fourth by six and a fourth, I think is the way I cut it. But you should check your own and just make it a quarter of an inch less in length and in height or width. And it should fit fine and nothing has to be done with perfection here. And I'm going to put this one here. Again, trying to put a border. somewhat evenly all right so now I have my two sides covered inked around with the vintage photo distressing so for the left side I have cut a piece that doesn't and again I'm going carefully here to save on my paper um, it doesn't cover the whole thing because I had this material that was a burlap material came in a big roll I think I got it at Michael's and it had this gold and I've been presenting gold but I don't want to have a lot on this page um, it's very rustic I wanted to stay with rustic and I'm going to use it as a pocket for here so I didn't have to use an entire piece of paper for this and I'm just going to, this has already been inked up as well. All right. And then I have essentially matted with the black, the green, and then the paper that I'm highlighting. And it helps to save all that extra space not being used by the paper allows me to actually cover two pages with one sheet. I really liked this little um, compass sort of thing in that I'm making this you know maybe like a travel album and perfect for somebody who's going on a trip to Europe somewhere and again I'm using the tacky glue for fabric just because I it's thick enough so that you can almost tap it in and sometimes I put it here but this is a very uneven piece so I'm gonna put it right on plus the burlap is thick enough so that it's not just coming through and I cut it so that the, 
the seam that's been closed by the sewing machine is down on the bottom and the rough edges are in the other places. I may come back and put a little cover along the top here. But I did put some of the ink on here as well. Alright, so this is already turning out to be a messy task. And just leaving this open, only gluing the bottom and the right and left side. And I have a little rustic fabric pocket in the attempt to save paper but still very much highlight the paper I've chosen to work with. What I did was took some of my smaller strips and I have inked the edges and I'll be layering them. And then I took the smaller one and I have put the word stamped on memories and I did emboss that. So I'm going to start to glue these on. There we go. There's the first one. And so this allows me to use the scraps of the paper use up every part of it still cover much of the two pages with the paper that I've chosen to highlight but I didn't have to cut into the second sheet and the other side of the sheet is filled with all kinds of tags and stuff and I would really prefer to use the tags as final embellishments so I want to save one of the tag pages and yet I really wanted to have a couple of pages with all these beautiful vines and the purple grapes. And then with the memories, I decided to pop that up with some pop dots. But because it is an album, I'm just going to put a little bit of glue too because I really don't want these pop dots to eventually come off. It's one thing if you're giving a card, but if you are creating something permanent, like an album, maybe a little bit of glue, right? I just peel off these backings. Ooh, stuck to it. And just put one drop of glue so the sticky still works but it also has the glue and all of this has as well been inked okay so now that is raised a little bit that looks okay it actually in the camera looks like it's down too far because of the shadowing but I think I got it fairly even here we go. Now I am going to use one of the pockets here and I am using from the pocket and flip fold inserts C black this pocket right here and I have been discussing with people the fact that when you use these pockets because some people say you know there's no instructions what am I supposed to do with these pockets and Basically, this saves you a lot of time. This allows you to just dig into a project. You do not have to follow any particular instructions. You can do what you want with them. They're yours. But you already have, if you wanted to put an album together more quickly than from scratch and starting out with measuring and cutting and folding and all of that, that you already have um, a base to get started with. And what I've decided is that with this particular pocket, I want to uh, get rid of the bottom. So as you can see here, I've actually written the word remove. So you can do that. Why, why not? So I'm just going to take this out of the way for a second. And I am not going to use this little fold over piece here for what I want to do. But everything else is all ready for me to go. So I'm just going to cut that one piece off. 
There we go. Not scary at all. One small piece. And I have already placed the magnet and the washer so that it's ready. They come scored, but I have already taken my bone folder and taken the time to do a little pressing on each of those scores so that when you put it together, there's a little bit of space. I'm not quite sure. There's a little bit of space so that you can put a bulky tag or something in there. All right, so basically my pocket is ready for me to adorn it. I have chosen, again, some of the green and then the paper that we're working with on the top. And, and the same thing. Um, I wanted to leave a little of the black edge. I wanted it to have an appearance of being matted. So this is just about a quarter of an inch smaller. And it's going to fold up like this. So that's the top. Doesn't really matter. I'm going to put this one here. And this is inked as well. So I'm doing a lot of inking in this one that I didn't do in the last one. And I'm being very frugal with the papers, which I wasn't in the last one. And there is sort of a top and bottom, but I wouldn't be upset if I put it in the wrong direction. I'm trying to look around all four edges, make sure they're somewhat even. There we go. All right, so that's the cover. And then when you fold this down, there are two places to cover as well. And what I would like to do before I place those on, let me just find out which way I'm going here. This one's going to go there. This one's going to go there. So it's always good to do a little bit of a dry run even after you've gone to the trouble of cutting and everything. Make sure that the papers are the ones that you wanted to use. And so these are going to be left to place photos on, but I did think that it would be nice to take out another one of the stamps. So from the Italiana Grapevines set, which I love the stamps in this set. Um, I'm just inking up with some of the vintage photo. And I'm j I just randomly, you know, no real perfection here. And this is Distress Ink and it's a brown, it's not a black. I'm just putting the idea of the leaves there so that when you open it up it isn't plain. It matches the papers. Until somebody chooses to put a photo here, it will have some sort of an adornment that goes with the papers. Okay? And again, just don't worry about being perfect. These are handmade. I think if you listen to people on YouTube, you will hear everybody just about saying that at least once during every one of their videos. That perfection, that's for machines. We're not looking for perfection. We're looking to be creative and make handmade things and we are not machines. So, here we go. There's the first one. And the bottom one. Ta-da! Alright, so this pocket is going right there. I'm going to glue the flaps and this I do want to be careful to put a good amount of glue all the way to the edge because as you're pulling things in and out of the pockets you don't want a little tug to pull your pocket entirely off. You can flap the pockets around the edges if you want to but I have I'm not going to be doing that for this one. I don't see a need to do that for this one but you still want to be careful and make sure that you get enough glue so there's there's really almost like the glue has a suction seal when it goes down and I'm going to put this right on the very edge of the matting 
And there is something else before I do this. Yes, I'm going to be putting some glue right here along the bottom too. And I'm going to press down. Because if you put things in this pocket, you don't want them to fall out the bottom. And it doesn't have to be perfectly sealed. I'm not going to be putting um, coins <laughs> or little teeny beads in it. But I do want to press it along the bottom and make sure that a tag wouldn't just fall out. Because there is a pocket back here now. Okay. So there we go. Now we have the pocket and a few places that are matted for photos. So this is just a little metal decorative piece. has some gold shine to it and I'm just going to place that right there. And the reason that I'm doing that is because I want to make sure that there's something that sort of, you know, it's there, you can use it, you'll be able to use it as a tuck-in spot if you want, or it would just be an adornment. Now, I have for this side made a tag using some of the paper. And with this tag, I used the ornate borders and pockets. And I just used the top because these come in many parts. So you can actually just use the top if you want to. I did have to trim it a little because I chose to mat it. So um, if you decide to cut the two pieces with the same thing. It won't necessarily fit on there perfect. So I had to do a little fussy cutting to get it right. And then both are inked and it is inked on the back. And so there's a little tag for this side. I have also made a tag and used some of the seam binding on both of these, which I did use the ornate borders and pockets die for that one and then in this case I did use this piece as well as this piece to cut that out. Now that was a little bit of fussiness there making that because um, it's two layers of paper because I put the olive on the back and these are um, not bigs dies so you have to maybe add a piece of paper to your big shot when you're doing it and it's rather intricate so it was tough to get through the double layers of these fairly thick strong papers um, so I did have to work with that a little but as you can see I pulled it off you know there is a lovely top to this and you can see it even better against the green and then it was inked on both sides and I can put that in the pocket that we have here Make sure my memories can be seen. And yet you can still see the pretty decorative part sticking out. I have also made with the Ariana dies. I didn't even stamp this. I made this with the Ariana dies. And I'll probably um, do at least one flower making video with, with you. Uh, I just used my fine tip on my designer dries clear glue to put a little glue in spots and put the lines on the flower and I do not sell this in the store this is I think I think Viva Decor is in Germany um, but a pearl pen to do some dots on the inside and I was thinking that that would look lovely right there so let me just move this out of the way while I'm putting the flower on had to have a little bit of sparkle, right? So I got a little touch of the gold down here in the corner. I got a little bit of gold glitter and a nice flower over here to bring your eye up here. And uh, actually, I think a little bit more to the top and on the edge. Good. And I also 
have this uh, fussy cut some of the grapes and I wanted to bring something down here as well so I'm not going to put a whole bunch of lace around the border on this particular one but I used some stickles so I could get it sparkly and special and I'm just going to place that on there I'll have to decide whether or not, no I'm not even going to decide I'm just because it's fabric I'm see the the glue soaks right into the fabric so I am just going to go ahead with my aliens and add that glue as well you know it doesn't hurt to use unless of course you should read your instructions on everything but these are water-based products they're not toxic they shouldn't have any issues hanging out together so mixing the two types of glue should do it all right so just a little hint of the grapes over there and with the scrap I just had a piece of white paper just a piece of white paper laying around that when I made some more of the seam binding uh, I had the ink all over the place so I just smeared it up there and uh, put some lines on it, stamp some lines on it so you could use it as something for journaling and I figured why not I had a little piece of the paper left over and I'm just gonna once again just give the idea of the leaves on the bottom there maybe just a touch of the leaf there another touch of the leaf over here and that gives me a nice little journaling tag and I figured I would just add that as well over here and there we go what do you think there's the next page so more tags can be placed in here later a nice little spot up here with the word memories and the pretty little flower we've used one of the pockets we've got more places for photos here we've got a lovely tag and it's matted for photos there and there we go so there's the next pages yay I was able to find the time to put this together for you and I hope you're enjoying the album and where I'm going I think in the next pages I want to go more purple right so what I'm trying to do is start off very vintage get a little bit of shimmer and the green olive tones in uh, start to walk more towards the purples I think I want to indulge in um, something that has a lot of purple so I'll look through the papers pick out what I want to work with for the next pages in the meantime as I've said most of these items you can get at huckleberryherbs.com. Please come on over and visit me. Thank you so much. Don't forget to leave a comment. I love to hear what you have to say. Until next time, everybody, this is Kathy from Huckleberry Herbs and Art. God bless.